Ok chưa? Ông chúng tôi sẽ đẹp cả một tổ Cái chấm đá cao này tự tìm sẵn là ca Nếu bước đi Ông chúng tôi sẽ đẹp một tổ Sẽ đập Sẽ khi cầm rồi bỏ Nẹ chấm đi để bị thiệt lỡ Đây là nâng Một tổ cao tăng phòng nùa Đánh đào đời Rồi mới tìm cả phía cái đầy Lục Khi xong phòn Hay một nông phát đo viết ca chung từ Rồi mới tìm cả phía cái đầy Lục khi xong phòn Đồng thời xe cầu vật thí là người ca vì xa nập hiếp bọt đồng miền Nâng áp bọt đồng miền phía kỳ nâng bọc cổ đài lòng nhầm ra Hãy chơi Có hẳn chơi nhỏ chỗ ruộng được nông kênh nhầm đài ca thảm nạc ca đi Xôm chơi Xôm cực lộp thiến Cực phía kỳ tiền ổn nâng 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 rừng đầy ní Mình bọt miền Lợt lên tài chôn chọc chào yên xa rí Mình bọt miền nơi mình tục không khuôn kháng kháu mình tục xa mà nạc ca đi Đào chôn chọc chào bàn xa 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 Tạm rời dạng mê tìm vì đã bỏ con, nông ca chô rùm đồng nà ca này tệm thí Đại bí tố bị bình tục xa mạng nà ca Xâm rạp rời dạng bê bình mùi thay ngay này thay ngay xa mạng nà ca này Đi khất lẹ bóng sức rồi bỏ chôn chọc chát bàn bà cô đo gà làm chi rụi hào Chấm nói ai xa xây đại ơn chôn nông mẹ bàn có hai mộc đo xa khai cám bằng tố Bị bình chọc xa khai cám nẹ chùm nhính để vịt chân lỡ Cư xa xây đại miên rà hà xa niếm thi xí đà bí dụ pram rồi học sập buồn Dạ xây rụp ní nâng miên vọt miên nợ bần tụp rồng chám nâng mong đọc mùi Dạ xây ban bần chạy thà tam xa mặt tập hiệp đại cột ách đấng Cư cột bần miên tùm nẹ tùm nông nhiệt lộ hất Rư nhiệt bốn chìa môi nâng chôn chọc cháu Rư phía kì đa mặt đấng rọt bạc về ní nà muối đại ban tự tu xoan nụ tỉ Dạ xây ban thua xong bọt nơi chôn phung mục lũ ta đọc bọng đại rụi hói Cá bị thay tìm một phẩy buôn khai cạc đá cho nam phí bọn đọc bì สะเมตวีปรักษาบอกสะใส่รูปนี้ชิมัวลูกเมตวีลำบนเหงสมอคุณบ่าคุณลูกเมตวีบังอังบันติ๊งอังยิมเรียบบันตะตูลปีสมระ
de Kyushampan. Vous avez expliqué à cette barre que euh, les personnes qui figuraient sur la liste des 34 qui sera utilisée par Sianouk en 1963 euh, étaient des personnes qui n'étaient pas connues du roi pour une appartenance à un parti communiste cambodgien, mais qui étaient plutôt connues pour leur gauchisme. Et euh, ma question consiste à vous demander si, au-delà de cette information ou pas qu'avait le roi, euh, en ce qui concerne que son pan, euh, cela ne correspondait pas à une certaine réalité. Pour être encore plus précis, est-ce que vous voyez à cette époque-là que son pan comme euh, un véritable communiste pratiquant si vous me permettez cette expression, plutôt comme un progressiste, moins sympathisant. Thank you, thank you, and good morning. That's a uh, complicated but good question. Uh, I'm not sure if you want me to say how I saw Kusampan at the time myself in 1963, which reflect back to the times where I was here in 6062. Certainly at the, in those days, I had no evidence that he was anything more than a uh, I wouldn't just say progressive, I'd say very progressive uh, member of the Cambodian intellectual elite. His uh, newspaper was uh, pretty uh, probing and was shut down by the Sino government as being uh, uh, thought subversive. So it's very in the open, uh, left, uh, progressive, but I have no evidence of CP uh, membership. No, of course, as you said, did the king even know about the CPK when he uh, was given this list of 34 uh, leftist intellectuals. He didn't know that CPK existed as such. Ça répond effectivement à ma question. Je vous remercie. Je voudrais également euh, connaître, euh, M. Chandler, <coughs> votre euh, appréciation des, des premières expériences de collectivisation en zone Khmer Rouge avant 1975. Et je voudrais ce que vous nous disiez si, dans le contexte de l'époque, il s'agissait à vos yeux de, de mesures euh, condamnables ou de choix euh, qui pouvaient avoir un sens et qui pouvait rencontrer l'adhésion de personnes qui n'étaient pas forcément des communistes enragés. If you're talking of the uh, elements of collectivization in the uh, southwestern zone in 1973, I'm not sure who you uh, would like to say was condemning that. Uh, certainly uh, the American uh, diplomat who was the source of a lot of that information to the Western world, to the outside world, was in a position to condemn it because it seemed uh, very cruel. Uh, I don't know what other voices you're asking for who might have condemned this uh, this uh, collectivization, which was, as far as we can say, indeed quite sudden and quite grim. Ce que euh, je voulais savoir, c'est si, étant donné la situation économique du Cambodge, il avait pu, même à vos yeux, sembler que... Euh, cette tentative de collectivisation des forces économiques était justifiable. Well, it was certainly uh, justifiable to the people who, who perpetrated it. I'm not sure I'm equipped to answer that question otherwise. Je vous remercie. Je n'irai donc pas plus loin sur ce terrain. Est-il historiquement juste 
de dire que dans les années 70 à 75, les Vietnamiens n'étaient pas seulement présents au Cambodge pour y chercher les refuges, mais également pour tenter d'y mettre sur pied et donc d'y contrôler à l'échelon des communes et des villages, une sorte d'autorité administrative et pour y recruter une armée Khmer qui aurait donc été sous leur contrôle. I don't have evidence of that Vietnamese political activity, and I certainly uh, don't think that certainly after 72, when almost all their troops were withdrawn, uh, that this political activity would have been uh, permitted by the Khmer Rouge. I, I, I'm not sure what sources you're using here, uh, because I haven't read uh, about this political uh, indoctrination. Certainly, the Khmer Rouge themselves were recruiting in this period, and certainly until 1972, as they were building their forces, uh, they were operating, they were trained and armed, and uh, not led, but trained and armed to a large extent by their allies of the Vietnamese. D'accord. Donc, pour être très clair, vous n'avez jamais entendu, ne serait-ce même que euh, évoquer cette théorie. That I can't say. What I was saying is, I don't remember a source that I've used in my own work for that kind of a theory, and I've never written it down. Someone may well have said it to me at some point in the last uh, 35 years, and I can't say I haven't heard it, but if so, I don't remember such a conversation. Votre micro est encore branché. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm finished. Attention. <laughs> um, est-il exact historiquement que les Cambodgiens et les Vietnamiens se sont livrés à une sorte de course à la libération de leur ville respective pardon, de, de Phnom Penh et de Saigon I'm not clear at all about that question. Which Vietnamese and which cities, uh, 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 which dates? I, I need to have some clarification on the question. En 1975, est-il exact que euh, les Vietnamiens de leur côté et euh, les Cambodgiens du leur euh, se sont livrés à une sorte de, de course à la libération de leur, euh, des, des, des villes euh, de Saigon pour euh, ce qui concerne les Vietnamiens et de Phnom Penh pour ce qui concerne les Cambodgiens. Est-ce qu'on peut dire qu'il y avait une sorte de, de course à la, à la libération du territoire This is certainly uh, the way the Khmer Rouge uh, interpreted it once they'd won, and they may well have spoken about such a race in uh, uh, meetings with which we don't have uh, records, but I can't recall having seen any records that indicate the Vietnamese racing the Cambodians, uh, and nor that they felt that they had uh, lost the race by occupying Saigon uh, two weeks later than the uh, Khmer Rouge occupied uh, Phnom Penh. Uh, the Vietnamese uh, communists up to the end were facing a well-organized army and up to nearly the end were facing uh, large numbers of foreign troops. Uh, neither of these was the case in uh, Cambodia, with the exception, of course, that we've mentioned, uh, if we can call the uh, bombardments of the three a... Uh, the same as foreign troops, but no, I don't think there was such a race. I think there was, uh, 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 it was considered uh, by the Khmer afterwards uh, that 
alors en partant justement de l'idée que pouvaient s'en faire les, les Khmer Rouges, est-ce que d'un point de vue historique et géopolitique, euh, il vous semble que leur compréhension de, du moment était justifiée, à savoir, est-ce que il était géopolitiquement important pour eux d'avoir euh, remporté cette course, même si elle avait, euh, même s'ils étaient les seuls à en avoir la perception. Et dans, pour préciser peut-être un tout petit peu davantage, est-ce que dans ce contexte géopolitique, il était absurde de penser que les Cambodgiens, enfin, il était absurde pour les Cambodgiens, pardon, de penser que les Vietnamiens pourraient chercher à les déloger de Phnom Penh Oh, certainly in 1975, I don't think the Vietnamese had any interest at all in dislodging the Khmer Rouge from Phnom Penh in April 75. They had many, many more important things to do. It's an important light motif of Khmer Rouge uh, ideas about the world. Uh, and perhaps this is ex extended later on in history and before that also, that they think that people's pri that the priority of foreign powers uh, has to do with, have to do with Cambodia. Cambodia is low on the list of most foreign powers. This is something that the Khmer Rouge were not willing to accept. Um, the, um, let me just think. Um, yeah, I mean, The idea that the Vietnamese had a lot more to do than occupy Phnom Penh in April 75, such as taking control of a country of 40 million people that had been hostile to them for 30 years, that it didn't occur to the Cambodians if they're saying what they had in mind at this point was seizing Phnom Penh. This is part of the, uh, I hesitate to say paranoia, but a, a constant kind of distrust of Vietnamese intentions, and I think in many ways a misreading of them. Not always, it was not always a misreading, but occasionally a misreading one. The idea that the high priority in Vietnam's foreign policy was always to destroy, occupy, whatever word you want to use, uh, Cambodia in one form or another. Uh, in one form of government or another, I'm sorry. Je vous remercie. Alors j'ai une question qui va peut-être vous sembler un petit peu naïve sur euh, le nombre de morts euh, pendant la décennie 1970-1980. Parce qu'il est question de chiffres, nous en avons parlé, vous en avez déjà parlé dans différents ouvrages, et puis au bout du compte, ces chiffres se retrouvent devant ce tribunal. Et je voudrais que vous nous parliez rapidement des, des incertitudes qui pèsent sur ces chiffrages. Je sais bien qu'un seul mort est de trop, mais je n'arrive pas à, à comprendre comment et quand, dans un pays comme le Cambodge après le Cambodge démocratique, à la suite d'une succession d'événements aussi graves que les bombardements américains, la guerre contre l'ONOL, la famine, le régime du Kampuchea démocratique, le conflit contre les Vietnamiens, il a été possible de faire la part des choses et d'une certaine manière de rendre à César ce qui appartient à César, c'est-à-dire attribuer à chaque événement son lot de, de décès. Est-ce que vous pouvez... Euh, nous en dire un peu plus sur ce thème. Oui, 
Uh, thank you. Uh, I can't tell you much. I can only tell you what I've relied on in my, on my work, which was not, as I've said before, uh, direct demographic research on my part. Uh, the two censuses in Cambodia, which were nationally conducted, were in 1962, and the population was estimated at 5.8 million. 1998, 13.5 million. Uh, demographers have estimated that had the picture, it continued at its uh, normal unquote, uh, rate, uh, the, the population of 13.5 million would have been reached not in 1998, but in 1991. So therefore, the deficit is a population deficit in the period between uh, those, two, those two periods. On the other hand, in 1968, already you have it, a larger figure, 1970, already a larger figure, so it's between 70 and 98 that you have this, uh, this deficit. Uh, and estimates in the early, early, early 80s. Uh, how many people died? I, I can only say that in this case, uh, I do refer to a consensus of opinion that's developed from the study of the demographic uh, uh, data that's available. Uh, <coughs> this uh, figure all comes to a total, I'm not sure, but let's say, and, and I hate to be crass with these figures because I know these are all people, but the figures are very uncertain. Uh, half a million, perhaps, uh, in the uh, Civil War bombardment period. Uh, 1.8 or 1 point between, somewhere between, even in the demographer titled his article, between 1 and 3 million. It's just there that the consensus has developed between one and three million of deaths occurring uh, under the Khmer Rouge. Uh, of those, uh, the consensus has drifted back from three million to uh, or somewhere between 1.5 and 1.7, which is, I think, the figures I've used most of the time in my recent research. The figure of three million was bounced around by the Vietnamese uh, immediately in 1979 and was picked up by one of the defendants in the court by saying if three million people were killed, they were killed by the Vietnamese. Uh, so this figure was then abandoned, as, although it still appears on uh, tableaus at Chung Ek, which I think is really quite, uh, I don't know, uh, I can use reprehensible, too strong a word, but I, I wish these figures were not still around in circulation because three million is much higher than anyone has ever estimated. Some scholars are saying that maybe the 1.5 is too low as more and more grave sites are discovered from this period, but I don't know. How you divide up these, this population deficit by cause and how much you die, divide up whatever figure you give to uh, deaths under the Khmer Rouge, uh, either starvation, overwork, uh, mistreated diseases, uh, trauma or execution, uh, it's impossible to decide which figure is accurate because there's no way of describing it. People extrapolate the figures of uh, executions, for instance, from the data that is, might be available from some of the uh, execution sites around Cambodia. They extrapolate uh, the balance from uh, the use of uh, extensive use of, re of, uh, of refugee reports quite early in the 1980s, some of these by a Finnish group or by a Japanese group to try to extrapolate figures. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the beginning of your question suggested that no uh, precise figures are available is uh, something that you should always preface any question and any response with that sentence because precise figures aren't available, these are all estimates, but the number of testimonies both at this court and uh, way, away, way far away from the court of the number of people who the, the number of family members that, that people have said they lost under the Khmer Rouge, uh, and here I cannot see what pressure or bribery could make people give a false answer, I mean to say they lost their parents when they didn't, uh, has led people to think this death toll was, again, somewhere between one and three million. And raising that, of course, as I said, higher if you include the, uh, to include the, er, the 70, 75 period. So you get it up to another ha add another half million, but that's not under discussion of the tribunal, but it is making a total between those two dates that you discussed. Merci pour cette précision. Je voudrais revenir 
Mais sur une question que j'ai déjà effleurée, euh, et vous demandez si, d'après vous, euh, le type de collectivisation qui précède 1975 était du même type que celle qui sera instaurée pendant le régime du Kampuchea démocratique. Et plus précisément, je voudrais que vous me disiez si, d'après vous, le, le simple fait qu'il y ait, peut-être, vous allez le, le dire ou non, une version euh, préalable plus, euh, plus douce, puis une version euh, postérieure plus dure, est-ce que euh, cela était prévisible, d'après vous, euh, à l'époque. I've lost a bit of your question. Uh, was something foreseeable in 1973 uh, from the information gathered by uh, Kenneth Quinn or was something... Uh, I mean, the, the answer is it seems to me that the, the information that uh, Mr. Quinn uh, received from refugees uh, fleeing into Vietnam in 1973 seemed to suggest or so I won't say seemed to suggest, suggested that many of the programs uh, later introduced in BK were already in effect, not all of them, but certainly the uniformity of uh, costumes, the very hard work, the communal uh, eating, uh, the uh, breaking down of personal property, uh, these policies put in effect by uh, Tom Mock, a member of the Central Committee uh, and a member of the Standing Committee, suggests that, to me, that he could not have been acting independent of DK policy, so not DK, it wasn't yet DK, of uh, uh, the CPK policy, uh, I think the policy seems to, the history seems to suggest that this was a, an area in 73 that seemed an appropriate place to begin uh, this, uh, this uh, work. Uh, there wasn't fighting going on there for reasons that I'm not clear why Takeo and so on were not uh, heavy combat zones, but they apparently weren't. Uh, there was under firm <coughs> uh, CPK control, uh, been liberated quite early in the Civil War. Under uh, Tamok over the years had developed a very um, loyal and uh, capable uh, set of subordinates who were the people who operated in the Southwest later on. So, yeah, I mean, this was a... a successful beginning of the sorts of policies, not all of them, to begin with, there was intimidation of monks also happened in this, uh, in this period. Almost, not quite the list of eight, but several ones of the list of eight. Parle, Monsieur Chandler, je, ce que je voudrais savoir, c'est si, d'après vous, historiquement, il y a eu un, un durcissement progressif de... បាទមានការតាំងរឹងខ្លាំងជាងមុនរឹតបន្តាំងជាងមុនអរិទេជប់ជប់សិនលោកមេត្តាវីជាញាប់ទៅពេកអត់មានការ <coughs> 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 No, my response was finished, but I don't see there was time to, for it to be translated before he began his next question, which I welcome, but I'm not ready to immediately answer the next question without my first one being translated. No, I'd finished talking. Thank you. Well, I know the temptation. I've leapt around myself, so I'm not sure. Chandler, j'essayais juste de, effectivement de vous interrompre, d'où le chevauchement, euh, car euh, j'avais le sentiment, en écoutant votre réponse, que euh, peut-être euh, ma question initiale n'avait pas été suffisamment précise ou que vous n'aviez pas compris. C'est la raison pour laquelle enfin, on ne peut pas perdre du temps, puisque celui-ci n'est pas tenté. J'ai tenté de, de vous interrompre et il y a eu un chevauchement dont je m'excuse. Ce que je voulais vous demander, le sens de ma question, c'était de savoir si, d'après euh, votre analyse, il y avait eu une progression euh, dans le sens d'un durcissement 
des politiques de collectivisation. Est-ce que vous feriez une différence entre la période avant 1975 et celle d'après Oh, I certainly would. I'm sorry if I if I didn't get the uh, point of your question. The difference, uh, one of the differences, however, is not the difference between the policies being pursued, which those uh, those trying to say identical policies in both places, but the large number of witnesses the second time, the small number of witnesses the first time, the small geographic zone the first time, the large uh, uh, geographic zone the second. So the second time we're talking of uh, evidence that's come in from the entire country, first time from just a portion of one province. So of course it gets much larger and the evidence suggests that it got worse, but we just have so much more evidence that uh, they're, they're different phenomena. Et sur la question du durcissement, parce que là vous, vous êtes en train de me dire que euh, du point de vue de la preuve, dans un cas on avait peu de témoignages et dans un second on en avait davantage, ou euh, peut-être que c'était dans un cas euh, moins répandu et dans l'autre euh, généralisé, mais du point de vue euh, du durcissement des mesures adoptées, est-ce que d'après vous il y a eu une progression ou non uh, uh, good question. Uh, there's lots of evidence that nobody was a tougher person under DK than Tamok. This is the same. And the, but he had a more cooperative base people type province under area under his control in the southwest under DK than, say, the uh, people in the northwest had who were, as I said before, dealing with hundreds of thousands of new people who had agricultural experience and a great deal of uh, expectations on the part of the government. Uh, the harshness of treatment, I think, uh, I want to cite before, uh, 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 I, maybe as part of the court record, there's certainly an excellent a chapter, an article by uh, Michael Vickery about variations under, under DK, where he was talking to refugees quite early, 8081, uh, in Thailand, uh, showing that there's a great difference in the way identical policies were implemented in different places. The policies were never ignored. There were no uh, revolts by cadre. But places with trained, ca trained cadre, a longer period of, DK, of CPK control, a smaller number of new people, all seem to operate in a smoother way than places with untrained cadre, lots of new people. So uh, things I don't think got more severe in the southwest, for example. They stayed severe, but people were used to that. They were more severe in the east than they certainly had been under Sihanouk, but they're less severe than they were in the northwest. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's as best I can do with your question. Je vous remercie. Et, et justement à ce sujet, euh, Est-ce que, d'après vos connaissances, euh, il est euh, exact de dire que dans certaines régions, euh, les, les chefs de zone et de district euh, se comportaient comme euh, de véritables petits euh, roitelets ou de seigneurs de guerre, selon, selon l'expression que l'on veut employer, euh, qui euh, ne rendaient pas forcément compte de toutes leurs activités au pouvoir central. I'm not really ready to use that kind of language. And we, again, how do we know what they didn't report? I mean, this is, uh, again, looking for the invisible archives and so on. Certainly, there was a great variety in the uh, reputation of these uh, people among people who were in their zones. Sao Pem, for instance, the Eastern Zone leader who committed suicide in 78, was recalled by more people, refugees whom I've spoken to, as someone who was as good as you could expect from the Khmer Rouge, as tolerant as they could hope for. There were people who had gone to the Eastern zone from Phnom Penh. Uh, others, like uh, Tamok, was quite severe, certainly with, with any new people or anything, any uh, objections to uh, his uh, 
control. Um, I hesitate to use uh, petty warlords. We're not talking about uh, pre-revolutionary China here. We're talking about a country that was under pretty, uh, more, I think probably more centralized political control than it occurred in, the, in its history. So warlords is a, is a phrase I don't want to, uh, a word I don't want to use. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire si, euh, dans les conditions qui, qui prévalaient sous le Kampuchea démocratique, euh, celles-ci incitaient plutôt les chefs euh, d'échelon inférieur à envoyer vers le sommet de la pyramide des informations valables sur l'état réel de leur région, ou s'il valait mieux pour eux euh, chercher plutôt à embellir euh, le tableau that's, that's a good question. It's impossible to answer. Again, we have no idea of, the, of how valid the few correspondences we have between zones that are. We suspect this is probably the case. Certainly, we know the quotas were not being met, and the reports to the center did, uh, for rice. Reports to the center did not say the quotas are not being met. But I'm certainly completely un unwilling to make a uh, blanket statement about reports to the center when A, so few of them survive, and B, we have no idea of knowing how true or false these reports are without a lot of corroborating evidence. I don't think they're a very good source of evidence for uh, people not telling the truth, for example, because I think people who, people have to be very sure-footed under this regime, and some people who didn't tell the truth and suggest in the ways you suggest were uh, purged as soon as the, the truth came out. So it's hard to answer your question on a, on a uh, blanket way. Et justement à propos des purges, une question dont j'espère que vous ne la trouverez pas trop générale, mais est-ce que, et si vous la trouvez trop générale, ne répondez pas, bien sûr, est-ce que vous pensez que ce qu'on appelait euh, les ennemis ont d'abord été purgés parce qu'ils étaient considérés comme des opposants au régime ou euh, ont d'abord été purgés en raison d'appartenance ethnique ou de classe this is a question that lies at the center of this whole inquiry. I, I don't uh, want to make a definitive answer to it, but certainly the evidence is that purges based on racial or ethnic categories came rather later than earlier. Uh, purges uh, and uh, purges of. <coughs> What were called class enemies, uh, it's hard to say whether all these people were actually members of an improper or antagonistic class. They were branded as that. They're also branded as KGB agents and uh, impossible things that just meant you're against us, we'll give you a bunch of labels. So the purges were not uh, racially based. Uh, I think in, in general the purges were very seldom racially based, and it's hard to say even that the uh, murders of uh, ethnic Vietnamese in the country in uh, 1978 uh, can be termed as purges, I think. Uh, they can be purged. That, to my mind, and this is uh, uh, an arguable point, uh, that uh, the, the, how do you want to say this, the, what the regime did to the Vietnamese seems to me to qualify as genocide under the UN Convention, and this is part of uh, my own, I've, I've said this in, in, in uh, my writings. The other uh, purges, by and large, do not. But this is just that's a personal opinion. But certainly, they came late in the regime. Any any purges related to ethnic groups came late in the regime, rather than early, rather than 75, 76, or even 77, actually. Yeah. Pour continuer sur la question des purges, mais appliquée à un autre domaine, 
Nous savons que sous le régime du Kampuchea démocratique, les purges ont atteint des personnages très haut placés. Et dans ce contexte, j'ai un petit peu de mal à comprendre deux aspects de votre témoignage à cette barre qui, pour l'instant, me paraissent contraires et au sujet desquels je voudrais vous donner l'occasion de vous expliquer. D'un côté, vous avez dit qu'il y avait peu de débats ouverts au sein du Kampuchea démocratique, même à très haut niveau. Et en même temps, vous avez dit que euh, la prise de décision sous le Kampuchea démocratique vous paraissait beaucoup plus collective que vous ne l'avez écrit il y a 22 ans. Et ma question est la suivante. Comment peut-on prendre des décisions collectivement s'il n'y a pas de débat ouvert It depends how small the collective group is. I mean, an open debate is not characteristic of DK. Uh, decisions made by a secret group uh, have the validity that that group gave to them. Uh, I don't think there's a problem. I don't think, see, there probably are, I'm, I'm sure my testimony is full of contradictions and I'm sorry for them, but uh, this doesn't seem to present one to me. No, uh, let, me, let me supplement that. We have no evidence that the purges of very high people in the party are the direct result of open opposition to the regime spoken in a collective context by one of these people. And actually, this is not when you get to people like Von Vett and so on, or in the Central Committee, in their long confessions, not admissible as evidence. They never say they raised issues at the party, and there's no evidence that they did. They were purged for some other reason then uh, failing to uh, or making open objections to policies at these uh, collective meetings. Donc vous pensez qu'ils pouvaient le faire librement Vous pensez qu'ils pouvaient s'exprimer librement dans, dans, dans ces réunions Oh, of course not. I mean, <laughs> you see what's happened to what they knew what would. No, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm stammering. I shouldn't do that. Uh, these people had gained confidence in each other as a kind of composite group, group think group. Group think is a term used for the Pentagon planners of the Vietnam War, for example. They had a like set of, of ideas, a like, like set of objectives. Uh, they did not. They accepted the leadership of the Standing Committee. Uh, the Standing Committee accepted the leadership of Pol Pot. Uh, there may well have been some questions raised at some of the uh, ar disappeared archives, the wonderful uh, cloudy things that we wish we had as as access to. But the whole tradition, it seems to me, of uh, what I've read of other uh, communist parties and so on, uh, particularly in uh, China or the Soviet Union, is uh, Vietnam that open uh, discussion of involving uh, that suggested sharp uh, deviations from set policy or sharp uh, objections to uh, statements by uh, the uh, secretary of the party. Were, that was fatal. People just didn't do it. So they, I wouldn't ever say open discussion. We're not talking of a uh, French cabinet meeting or an Australian uh, you know, uh, Congress. This is a different world. Je voudrais passer à une autre question dont vous venez de citer le thème à l'instant en parlant d'archives. Lorsqu'il vous a posé des questions, mon confrère Sonarun de l'équipe de défense de Nyonchea vous a demandé si vous aviez visité tous les lieux dont vous parliez dans, dans vos ouvrages et vous avez répondu que ça n'était pas forcément capital dans un travail d'historien. Moi, de mon côté, je voudrais vous demander ce qu'il en est de la consultation euh, de documents d'époque 
sous la forme d'origine. Vous avez vous-même convenu que le contexte politique du Cambodge était extrêmement lourd depuis la fin du Kampuchea démocratique, au point qu'il avait pu mener à certaines soustractions de documents, à une disparition de pans entiers d'archives. Et je me demande si dans un tel contexte, vous ne pensez pas qu'il serait préférable pour un historien d'avoir en main à un moment donné euh, les documents qu'on lui présente comme étant des originaux plutôt que des copies Oh, certainly. I mean, uh, that, that, that goes without saying. I think we do have a good, great many original uh, DK texts in our hands, however, uh, particularly uh, those bringing from uh, S21. These are not Xeroxes. Yeah, these are the original uh, uh, texts, as far as we can tell, unless they're massively forged with original typescripts and so on, which is unthinkable given the financial uh, resources of the uh, early years of the PRK. Uh, certainly, it'd be better to have uh, <laughs> be better to have things we don't have. But that's uh, I mean that's true of life. I mean it's uh, uh, you do your best with what you've got. But yes, it is regrettable. Again, I want to get back to the this culling issue. It looks as if there's some going on, but I don't want to make too much of it. As I said this to the uh, defense because when you don't know what's missing, you really can't make a lot of decisions. There may be only one or two, could be a hundred. I don't know how, what is missing. There's no record that says, we used to have these records here, they're no longer here. That, that's not what's happening. Things are gone. Things that we would like to see, well, such as the standing committee meetings, which we're sure, I'm certain, were minuted right up to the end of 78, uh, are missing, for example. Pour poursuivre sur cette question, vous avez dit hier à Bar que vous pouvez estimer qu'il y avait eu au moins 300 réunions du comité permanent sur le démocratique. Or, nous ne disposons aujourd'hui que de 19 procès-verbaux qui mentionnent dans leur titre réunion du comité permanent. Je ne suis pas excellent en, en, en chiffrage, mais je, je crois que 19 sur 300, ça correspond à peu près à 8%. Et je ne cherche pas ici à, à accuser quiconque d'être responsable de cette situation. Ce n'est pas là objectif, mais à vous demander si vous ne pensez pas que la situation de l'historien, vous pouvez un petit peu d'y répondre, auquel il manque 92% des, des procès-verbaux qui rendent compte de l'activité de l'instance suprême du parti que cet historien est dans une situation extrêmement difficile à surmonter pour atteindre les objectifs I'd say to some extent, I mean, the minutes of the Standing Committee of the Soviet Union and the Communist China have never been available to Western writers, yet some very respectable and I think pretty uh, widely accepted histories of elements of those regimes have been drawn from other sources. So I don't think not having, and it should be more like 150 rather than 300, I should, uh, my last arithmetic I took was 1948, so <laughs> it was a, if it's a weekly meeting, you have a three-year regime, let's say it's about two or one, over 150. This is a remark of, that uh, Hugh Sampan made openly. They met sometimes once or twice a week. So let's say once a week, twice we get you to 300 and so on. Uh, I don't think, I think these meetings are crucial, but they're, they're not necessarily available. Uh, American cabinet meetings are not available. They're confidential. Uh, people write history without uh, these things and accept that fact. It's regrettable, but I, I, I just, uh, I don't know what to say, not object to court word. I don't use that word. Unmanageable is not a word I'd use because, I mean, people manage without these things. They manage commendably. They write good history without these particular documents. Or well, they can write good history and they can write bad history also. Et est-ce que cette 
pénurie de documents d'époque euh, dont nous venons de parler pourrait expliquer que si l'on compare euh, certains de vos ouvrages, celui euh, qui est intitulé S21 ou le crime impuni des Khmer Rouge, qui est fondé sur euh, les archives importantes trouvées à S21, en comparaison d'autres euh, ouvrages sur le régime, euh, qui est une différence, c'est que certains paraissent plus narratifs, peut-être plus romancés. Vous vous souvenez que mon confrère euh, Michael Carnavas vous a lu de nombreux passages, même si pas tous, des ouvrages. Est-ce qu'il y, y a là peut-être une source, une explication de cette différence que l'on peut noter entre vos différents ouvrages Well, I wish I had written novels. I've never written a novel. Uh, I wish I had. I'd like to be a novelist, but I'm not. And I don't think biographies are novels. I don't think they're nonfiction. I, I don't think they're fiction. I, I, I don't accept that uh, differentiation. They're a different genre from narrative political history. They have to be there about an individual person. But yes, there is a difference. For instance, for my book, The Tragedy of Cambodian History, I used almost no original Khmer Rouge documents because I, didn't, I hadn't gotten into Cambodia before I submitted the manuscript. It had some documents that had come out through uh, various people from S21. I used a few confessions. I had, uh, I had access to some of these early standing committee meetings so printed in that book, uh, Pol Pot Comes to Power. I did the best I could, uh, and also, of course, that's only one chapter of the book is devoted to this period rather than the book covered uh, a 35-year uh, period. For the uh, Pol Pot book, uh, I used as many original documents as I could, again, uh, including uh, recorded speeches of his and uh, documents from Tung Padi Wat, which was uh, revolutionary flags, Contempor that's a contemporary Khmer Rouge document which you have in its original, or we have copies of the original. Uh, I used uh, some uh, confession texts already. I was starting to work on the uh, archives of S21. I'd already I'd come back to Cambodia for research in 90, 91 and submitted the manuscript in 92. Uh, the, the third book uh, was, I think I said, uh, not in narrative form because it wasn't a history of S21. It wasn't a narrative history of S21. That's only the first chapter. It was an analysis of uh, the operations of S21 as far as this could be induced from in large, to a large extent, uh, from the uh, uh, archival material springing from that place. And I said before, when someone asked about percentages of sources and interview sources and interviews, the interviews were highest in the first book, and lowest in the, in the S21 book, the percentage of interviews versus documentary work. Each book is different. Each book required a slightly different techniques. I don't think a... Uh, no, so I'll leave it at that except to uh, renew my reluctance to accept the idea that I've been writing uh, fiction. Ma question n'allait pas jusque là, Monsieur Chandler. Tout de même pas. Et, euh... <laughs> Ces derniers jours vous ont été présentés euh, des photocopies de documents supposés euh, être des documents d'époque et, et parmi les documents qui vous ont été présentés ces derniers jours, il y en a certains euh, qu'à un moment donné dans votre carrière de chercheur, vous avez eu en main, euh, sous une forme originale Yes, there are. Uh, some of the standing committee uh, minutes in original form were given to me uh, in that form. I Xeroxed them that night, I returned them to the person who had given them to me. So actually, the phrase in my hands is rather good. This is, I had them in my hands before I read them.
uh, some of the confessions from S21 in original copies I have held in my hands, uh, others I've seen in Xerox form. Uh, so that's the answer to your question. Hello. Pour être un peu plus précis, essayer de donner un exemple sur cette question. Lors du premier jour d'audience, vous aviez expliqué qu'un original du procès verbal du 30 mars 1976, vous avez été remis à vous-même ou à Ben Kiernan par une personne qui l'avait trouvé dans une maison en 1979. Est-ce que vous pourriez nous donner le nom de la personne qui vous a remis à vous ou à Ben Kiernan, je n'ai pas bien compris, euh, ce document à l'époque Yes, this was, I think it's a part, it's, a, it's been recorded in uh, court minutes. It was not a confidential element. I've sent uh, letters uh, in response to a request from the court about this. It was given uh, to Ben Kiernan in, I think, 1990, 19, sorry, 1982. He gave him a handful, I think, six or seven uh, documents. Uh, the man is Q. Conrad, a uh, later uh, official under the current regime. Uh, in 1990, uh, when I first came back to Cambodia, I went to see uh, Q. Conrad uh, just to interview him about uh, the uh, Khmer Rouge regime, and he said, I have been upset by the fact that Ben Kiernan published only one of the documents I gave him, the one that you've just been referring to, and because, I'm, I'm, because of that, I'd like to give you the others that I found, which I've held in reserve. So he gave me another seven or eight, which I took off to a uh, Xeroxing machine and returned to him the next morning. Uh, so there are documents, and I, I've, all these lines of transmission are, are in uh, letters that I've sent in requests, to requests from the court, so I'm not being as precise as those documents are about when I got what and so on, but uh, I think it's about half and half, and they were found in the same house at the same time, but he'd been holding on to them, uh, waiting to see if they would get published, and then he was planning to give Ben uh, some more, but Ben held on to all of them except this one for his own research, did not share them with me or anyone else. Uh, and used them in his book. Now, the ones that were given to me, uh, in contrast, uh, I Xeroxed them, uh, concealed the uh, name of the provider because that was important for him uh, as a Cambodian at the time, but Xeroxed and sent, and with his permission in advance, sent copies of these documents to as many scholars as I uh, as I thought would be interested, including uh, Ben Kiernan. Uh, so I opened up and said, this is out there now, Let's, uh, we can talk about it if you want to, rather than keeping them in some desk drawer of my own. This is a bit of, of history. That's in the letters also that I've sent to the court. Hello. À cette barre sont, sont venus euh, il y a quelques semaines euh, euh, les responsables actuels d'ICICAM. Euh, Et il m'a été donné de, de poser des questions à son directeur qui n'a pas voulu euh, indiquer à quel endroit il conservait euh, d'éventuels originaux datant de l'époque du Kampuchea démocratique. Et à mon sens, cette question a une importance, en tout cas en matière judiciaire, peut-être plus qu'en matière historique, je ne sais pas, mais en tout cas en matière judiciaire, ça a une importance, les originaux. Est-ce que, vous, de votre côté, vous avez la, la moindre idée de la raison pour laquelle Dissicam pourrait être réticente à indiquer le lieu de conservation euh, de documents originaux แม่จะมีกับมาตอนคอยตอบจะปรับอะไรจุดต่อหรือสมโนนี่ดาวีดำนางทรัพย์ปริญญาสมชื่นดำนางทรัพย์ปริญญาเอ่อ
First of all, I, I don't think that the very fact stated by my learned friend is true. I don't recall DC Cameron witnesses being unwilling to disclose the source of the documents they received and in fact we spent almost two weeks uh, hearing evidence on that issue. There might be some very limited exceptions. Um, uh, and that's where the work of confidential sources uh, don't relate to any of the documents we've been looking at over the last few days. But putting that factual point aside, the question is um, uh, inadmissible insofar as it requires the expert to opine as to the opinions uh, of another party. Uh, and I want to make one point, Mr. President. Mesdames, Messieurs du Tribunal, je, je crois que mon confrère a, a confondu euh, ma question. Je n'ai pas dit que les gens de Dissica m'avaient refusé de donner leurs sources. J'ai parlé du lieu de conservation. ពីគ្រឿងបានសួរទៅប្រធានម្ចាស់ម្ដុំ Secretary Je vais donc passer à une question suivante. Monsieur Chandler, lors du premier jour d'audience euh, à cette barre, Madame le juge Cartwright vous a demandé un certain nombre de commentaires sur le procès verbal du 30 mars 1976 qui est intitulé, je cite, « Décision » du comité central sur un certain nombre de problèmes. Ce procès verbal n'est pas signé, il ne contient pas de liste ou de mentions des participants. Et pour tenter d'éclairer cette situation, Madame Cartwright vous a donc demandé si en mars 1976, certains des accusés ici présents siégeaient au comité central. Ma question ne va pas porter exactement sur ce point. Ce qui m'intéresse, c'est votre opinion sur l'organe du parti dont émane ce document. Vous l'avez vu à plusieurs reprises. Si c'est nécessaire, on peut vous en remettre une copie encore à nouveau maintenant. Mais ce procès verbal mentionne dans son titre l'expression « comité central ». Mais certains chercheurs, par exemple Craig Etchison, qui est cité à ce sujet dans le jugement d'Ouk, pense qu'il émane très probablement non pas du comité central, mais du comité permanent du comité central. Est-ce que vous, vous avez une opinion à ce sujet
ចំណាំងសម្ភារញ្ញានេះជាសំណួរសំខាន់ណាស់លោកលោកពេកចៅក្រុមនេះគឺជាអឺមេធាវីសូមអោយអ្នកជំនាញយោងទៅរកចំណ
I must say, before I came down here, my daughter who lives in New York was amazed that I never spent any time in court. <laughs> so my behavior might be uh, irregular, and I apologize for that. But just to clarify, if I don't know what, he's, what the, uh, the defense lawyer said in French. In, in English, it came over as 810, which is, I'm sure he knows it, he means 870. I don't want it going on the record as 810. That's all I was trying to say. 810. It's 870. I'm happy to discuss 870. Thank you. Oui, j'ai effectivement parlé de 870. Vous avez à cette barre expliqué ce terme comme signifiant un nom de code pour désigner Pol Pot. Et vous avez également décrit un bureau 870 comme étant un endroit où étaient gérés les documents et toute la paperasse qui circulait au sein du parti. Et je voudrais que nous regardions ensemble un autre procès verbal qui est daté lui du 9 octobre 1975 et qui est la cote E382. Et je voudrais que l'on vous remette un exemplaire de document. Ma question porte sur euh, la page 2 de ce document. Page à laquelle nous, nous pouvons constater qu'il y a une distribution de, de postes et que l'expression 870 est utilisé à deux reprises. Au point 8, il est indiqué camarade Doun, chef du bureau politique de 870, et au point 12, il est indiqué camarade Yem, le bureau de 870. Et je voudrais vous demander si vous êtes euh, en mesure de faire euh, une différence entre ces deux administrations dont les appellations contiennent le chiffre 870 et de nous l'expliquer. Could I move the, could I move the page, the, my page up a little bit, please, on my screen? Raise the, what I'm looking at. Oh, that's not going to work. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm going to move the page up a little bit, please, on my screen.
uh, thank you. That's all I needed. I'm, I'm afraid yes. pushing the so page so down so didn't so help so me so with so my so uh, answer, uh, but uh, uh, yes, there's certainly a distinction with these, between, between these two names. Uh, uh, is, uh, 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 I see. Uh, I'm not. With prior notice, I could have found in my uh, hotel room, I think, the code comrade Yem. I'm not sure I could, I could, I could identify him. He's certainly a different person. And I, it is not, as far as I know, a, a code name. In, in, your, in your interest, the code name ever used by uh, Kusum Pan may have been, but not to my memory, not to my knowledge. So this is a name um, I don't recognize, and certainly different from the other one. Et pour ce qui concerne les attributions de chacun des bureaux, ainsi décrit, est-ce que vous avez la moindre explication ou est-ce que vous n'êtes pas en mesure de en dire davantage I can't really say any more from my own research, no. Uh, uh, the following paragraph, however, suggests that there was a great deal of work coming into this office. Uh, or concept, it may even be Paul Park talking about himself, but in a sense it's the same thing. He talks about an overload of uh, paper. So I presume uh, one of the roles of these people was to channel this uh, material uh, so that it could be uh, in manageable form. Uh, a, a little, uh, a uh, slight uh, modification I'd like to make to your earlier question. Uh, I don't think I ever said, and if I did, it was not uh, well said, that all the paperwork concerning the party came to 870. Uh, the, if all the paperwork concerned with the party came to 870, the building would be, uh, would be buried with paper and nobody would be living inside it. This would, paper directed to 870 came to 870. A lot of paper was, but not all the paper concerned the phrase you used, I think, with all the paper concerned, concerning the party. That's uh, not the phrase I'd, I'd use. Otherwise, I can't expand it. I, uh, I, I just can't go further than that. Oui, j'avais dit cela pour respecter le sens de la phrase que vous aviez prononcée à l'audience du 18 juillet. Vous aviez parlé même des poumons du parti. C'était peut-être une phrase trop générale, j'en conviens. Vous avez également euh, exprimé à cette barre euh, l'idée que... Euh, que son pan aurait succédé à Doun euh, à la tête euh, de ce qui est décrit ici comme le bureau politique de 870. Et je voudrais vous demander si euh, quels sont vos sources, quels sont les éléments de, de preuves tangibles que vous avez ou à quoi vous renvoyez pour exprimer cette opinion. I can only say that I've read it in many places. That's a, maybe an evasive answer, but I can't remember a specific source. It's a piece of information that is definitely in the, in the public domain. Uh, I haven't seen a uh, reason to uh, say that it's false. Uh, one reason to suggest it might be false is that uh, your client has denied it. So that's a, that's a piece of evidence that one has to weigh into. So this is why I'm not really ready to weigh those two against each other and be definitive. This is not something I've worked on very, at any stage recently. J'ai une question de, de curiosité, vous me direz peut-être si euh, elle est mal placée, mais j'ai remarqué que la semaine dernière, à un moment donné, euh, à propos du bureau 870, euh, sur lequel vous étiez interrogé, vous avez en quelque sorte refusé de vous prononcer sur les travaux de M. Stephen et de... Et je voulais vous demander de vous expliquer peut-être pourquoi ce, ce refus.
I don't think I did refuse to say anything about his work. I said a bit about his work, actually. I don't think refuse to say about his work was uh, is a, is a, is an accurate statement. I may indeed have based uh, some of my thinking about this particular move on things that he wrote, so I can say that is uh, that's true. I think these uh, uh, statements have also been written by other people uh, working independently. But yes, okay, Steve uh, Hedder was one of the sources for my my uh, view that Kirsten uh, Pond did occupy this position. And the material that he used that I was not able to, uh, to verify, clearly, it's his, it was his work, and I, I guess I accepted it, some, some of the, that particular part, anyway. Je voudrais maintenant changer de thème et vous poser une question relative à une réponse que vous avez faite au sujet de la, la chaîne des informations qui remontait depuis S21 jusqu'au sommet de la pyramide du Cambodgia démocratique. Et lorsque vous avez été interrogé sur cette question, vous avez euh, d'abord rappelé la déclaration de, de Douk euh, à son procès indiquant qu'il ne rendait compte de ses activités qu'à Sonsen. Et puis ensuite, euh, vous avez déclaré, et là je cite euh, votre réponse du 18 juillet 2012, dans l'après-midi, entre 15h21 et 15h23, et Sun Sen, je cite donc, estimait que S21 était suffisamment important pour en référer aux autres membres du centre de parti, du parti, pardon. Et je voulais vous demander si, dans le cadre de vos recherches, vous avez découvert, rencontré, eu à étudier le moindre document d'époque qui aurait démontré, sans doute possible, que M. Kiosampan avait reçu de Son Sen des informations venant de S21. No, I've never seen such a connection. And I must say again, the translation came through his testimony in 10th July. I'm sure you've said 20th, but just uh, the translation said I was testifying on the 10th. <laughs> I was in Australia on the 10th, so that doesn't work. Otherwise, no. The answer, I mean, I'm not trying to be facetious. The answer to your question is no, I've not seen such documents. Pour le transcript, je faisais référence au premier jour d'audience, le 18 juillet. Alors ma question suivante concerne le 19 juillet, la deuxième journée d'audience. On vous a déjà un petit peu interrogé sur cette réponse que vous avez donnée. Euh, je veux parler là du, du passage où vous avez euh, déclaré, je vous cite, c'est la page 29-30 vers 10h04 de la version française, ouvrez les guillemets, il me semble que la période de la fin des années 60 dans la jungle correspond davantage à un temps de préparation des politiques qu'ils appliqueraient lors de leur accession au pouvoir plutôt qu'à la nécessité d'échapper à la police de Sianouk. Et en fait, j'ai un petit peu de mal à, à comprendre cette déclaration que vous avez, vous avez faite. Et je la comprends d'autant moins quand je la rapproche de ce que vous avez dit ensuite. C'est-à-dire que vous avez par la suite dit à cette barque, rappeler que grâce à leur fuite dans la jungle, euh, les dirigeants du PCK avaient tous échappé au geôle du roi. Et puis vous avez également rappelé à cette barque que 
Vous avez parlé de la répression du soulèvement de, de Samlot. Et vous avez même dit hier que si elle n'avait pas été aussi sévère, que son pont n'aurait pas pris le maquis. Et je cherche juste à comprendre ce qui m'apparaît comme une contradiction. Est-ce que vous contestez ou vous revenez sur la sévérité de la, de la répression des... Euh, des soulèvements de Samlot et puis ensuite sur les menaces dont a pu euh, faire l'objet M. Kiosampan et qui a entraîné son, euh, son départ de Phnom Penh. Parce que c'est une mauvaise interprétation de ma part. Reading some of the things that uh, read my own material uh, after that, uh, one of the sessions, I, I found her, <coughs> and that may, and since I found it, made me remember that Sinuk had actually accused Kisampan to his face of fomenting the Samlot Rebellion, which is uh, a very treasonous offense. And I think uh, Kisampan, I can't speak for him, of course, but I think that kind of uh, sentence is rather uh, terrifying, and it certainly would con contain by implication at least a jail sentence. And so I think that accusation, was, I would infer, was sufficient to uh, impel Kusampan. I would say unwillingly, I think he would prefer to stay in Phnom Penh and do the work he was doing unwillingly, but rationally, into the uh, maquis of the jungle. Toujours sur cette période, euh, dans votre livre euh, « Tragedy of Cambodian History euh, » qui porte la cote D108, euh, barre de fraction 50, barre de fraction 1.75, en anglais, euh, puisqu'il n'y a pas de traduction en Khmer, euh, page 167, ERN 00-19-32-50, vous évoquez le recueillement de 15 000 étudiants euh, dans la province de Kandal et euh, le fait que ces étudiants pensent que Dieu Champagne est décédé. Et ma question porte sur euh, le fait de savoir si cette situation euh, aurait-elle pu, euh, dans votre esprit, euh, inciter Pol Pot, par exemple, à instrumentaliser euh, la popularité de euh, Kyosampan. I, I certainly would not agree with that supposition. I don't see evidence for it. I said in my first, uh, I forget which day it was now, I'm sorry, but that uh, Kusampan in this period, certainly in his electoral district, he was one of the very few uh, assemblymen who visited his district and cared and uh, responded to uh, difficulties that district had. I met people over the years who were in his electorate, and this is even after the Khmer Rouge period, certainly after the Khmer Rouge period. And these people all asserted that this was a really unusual, uh, loyal and popular deputy. So I think the demonstration, uh, I don't think this was organized by the CPK, which in any case was in Ratanakiri at the time, the, the directorship. I don't think they sent a telegram to somebody who I can't imagine. I don't see who in Kandal, in the high ranks of the party, at this time, we were able to, mo to mobilize uh, 15,000 students uh, with the false but quite plausible news that Kisapan had been killed. And people disappeared under Sino, just as they disappeared under uh, the Khmer Rouge. Uh, there was never any admission that they had been arrested, tried, convicted, uh, and executed. They disappeared. And his disappearance, uh, I think, shocked his electorate. I think this demonstration in his favor, uh, I just can't imagine why that would happen. And the long history of a relationship between 
Pope Paul and Kusipan never suggest that Pol Pot was in any case ever concerned with sabotaging um, Kusipan's popularity. I think this was a preoccupation of Sinuk. Sinuk did not like this popularity one bit. I think Pol Pot, uh, I, don't, I can't speak for him, so that's in my answer, I'm sorry. <coughs> En fait, vous répondez précisément aux questions que je vous pose et vous avez parfaitement raison. C'est moi qui me suis peut-être mal expliqué. Je ne demandais pas, et je ne prétendais d'ailleurs pas, que la révolte, plutôt, pardon, le recueillement de ces 15 000 étudiants dans la province de Kandal avait été manipulé par les partis. Ce n'était pas l'objet de ma question. Je demandais si c'était juste pour moi un exemple, en fait, de la popularité que son temps que je vous donnais. Et je voulais vous demander de rebondir dire sur l'enjeu à cette époque que pouvait représenter la, la popularité de Kyo C'était plutôt là-dessus, avec une prise de distance par rapport à l'illustration que j'en donnais à, à Kandal. Est-ce que le, la, la popularité de Kyo Sampan à cette époque euh, pouvait être intéressé euh, dans une perspective euh, politique euh, les Khmer Oh, certainly. I think the behavior of the three ghosts before they were ghosts was very useful to the party. And it's my view that these people were acting under, under party uh, direction generally. Uh, stay in the open, act as our, our front, do what you can to uh, pursue the overall, our overall goals. Uh, I think their popularity in that sense was um, pleasing, uh, must have been pleasing to the leadership. We have no record of that. And whether someone is pleasing or not is never the kind of language these people use. Were they doing their work well or not? I think their work was quite satisfactory. It happened in 67, as we said in the first uh, question, was that Kyu Sampan unexpectedly became terrified by the language that Sinek was using to him, which could hardly have been put in his mouth by the Communist Party, and made him think, if I stay longer, I'm going to go into prison. And I had a ton of you during my writing that book with a French official very close to Sinek at this time, who claimed to me that he had been visited by Kyu Sampan for his friend. Uh, a day or two before he left, we, and he told uh, the person I interviewed, uh, I, will have to, I have to get out of town, I'm sorry. <laughs> but my friend, this is an au revoir, they were speaking French, that this is goodbye. And my friend, my interview person, says that was a sad moment because he himself, a French progressive, felt that Kusampan was... Uh, doing very commendable work. Not for the party. My friend was, my interview about Ben was by no means ever a member of any French Communist Party, of any Communist Party. Justement, Chambler, à cette époque, il n'était pas membre du Parti Communiste. C'est ça qui m'étonne dans votre réponse. C'est que vous décrivez que son pan comme quelqu'un qui effectue un travail pour le parti, comme quelqu'un dont on est satisfait du travail. Et moi, je, je suis un peu étonné par cette description que vous donnez. Et je me demande sur quelle source vous fondez une telle analyse. Now, in the interest of allowing our counsel, uh, our learned friend, to get through his material, we've not objected to a lot of leading questions, but that was a particularly uh, blatant example of counsel testifying as to Mr. Q. Sampan's membership or otherwise of the CPK.
ដែលសេចក្តីចំទោះនឹងក៏បានហេតុនៃសេចក្តីចំទោះរបស់ដំណើរថៃបរិញ្ញាធ្វើឡើងមានមូលដ្ឋានត្រឹមត្រូវដូ
ហើយអរគុណច្រើនលើនេះដល់ពេលវេលាសម្លងតម្រាស់ហើយអង្គជំនះប្រកាសសម្រាក់ម្ភៃនីតិចាប់ពីពីរនៅទៅទៅរហូ